So if you saw my last video then about trying to get onto the 80 meter band from a fairly small mid terrace house, you will know that it wasn't a resounding success. Um, I tried to dual band my uh, 40 meter quarter wave vertical uh, by putting an inverted L for 80 and uh, it kind of worked on 80. The results weren't spectacular, but um, it messed up my 40 meters. So ultimately, I think we can call that a failure. So I went back to the drawing board and uh, one of my friends actually suggested um, the design I'm about to show you. It's called a uh, inverted terminated U antenna. Uh, it's by a guy called Chris Moulding. He runs um, crosscountrywireless.net um, and uh, you can buy the components from them or you can probably fairly easily make it. It's uh, basically a 9 to 1 ballon and a resistor. Um, I wanted to give this the best chance of working so I actually bought the components from Cross Country Wireless. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them in any way so uh, I can pretty much say what I want within reason. Um, the resistor and the ballon cost uh, £90 delivered which I thought was a bit on the steep side and uh, it took them about a month to deliver it so uh, if I'm brutally honest I didn't think the service was that great so come on cross country wireless sort it out but uh, I'll show you the design here on the screen and uh, we'll see what we go and I'll show you how I've set it up so um, you can see here then you got two 10 meter masts now my masts aren't quite that big my masts are about seven or eight meters so I haven't quite gotten 10 meters up and the wire running across the top here is about five meters which is roughly the sort of distance I've got so you can see here you've got your coax coming in you've got your nine to one ballon and ground rod there you go up the pole across the top and back down into your uh, resistor here and into another ground rod now on this diagram here you can see just above the ground there there's a wire an earth wire connecting the two ground rods together i've not actually installed that yet on um on the uh write-up on this uh, chris says that initially he tried it without that and supposedly um, not having that wire slightly reduces the local noise but reduces the antenna efficiency so it's a trade-off um, supposedly if you put that wire in um, it increases local noise pickup but it also increases the efficiency of the antenna so I'm going to start off trying it without that ground wire in and then we'll connect it later so in what I've set up at the moment, I've not actually got that wire between the two earth rods installed. So um, I think next thing, I'll uh, take you outside, show you the uh, setup I've actually got. And uh, then we'll uh, come in, put it on air and uh, see what happens. Okay, shaky camera time then. So here's what we've got. Here's the uh, ballon from Cross Country Wireless. And I've got the earth wire comes out there goes into my earthing plate. Now I've still got the radials attached. Um, according to the drawing you don't need radials but uh, they're already here for the vertical and uh, I figured it can only improve the ground right. So uh, I left them connected because they uh, connect to this radial plate here and here is where the antenna wire comes out and goes up the mast around about, like I say, about seven or eight meters up there. And um, I'll zoom in. See I've got four guy ropes there and the actual antenna wire goes down to that mast there. Now, instead of running the wire down the mast, what I've actually done is connected the wire to the mast because this is an aluminium mast. So I figured if I try and run the wire down the mast, probably going to get some unwanted interaction there so uh, I've actually made the mast part of the resonating element and then uh, this is where it comes out down this wire into your resistor here so this is the uh, resistor from Cross Country Wireless and then just these wires down into my uh, ground rod 
down there. Ciao, thank you. QZ Delta Japan 9, United November. Mike Zero, Golf Quebec Charlie. Mike Zero, Golf Quebec Charlie. Is that Roger? Roger, Roger, good afternoon then. Name is James, Juliet Alpha Mike Ex Sierra, uh, southern part of England. Go ahead. Okay, James, thank you very much. You're, you're, you're in Swindon, if this is right, so it's not so far from London. Uh, there's a big rail station, I believe. Yeah, James, I will give you a report next door. It was too short to, to give you an exact report, but you're loud and clear here. The name is Alain. Uh, James, over. Okay, Alain, and. Uh, Yes, you have the... Uh, right, yeah. Thank you very much. This is Mike Zero, November, Mike India, checking the frequency before QSY. Mike Zero, Golf Quebec, Charlie. Uh, Mike Zero, Golf Quebec, Charlie. Uh, that's an interesting. I uh, wasn't expecting um, energy uh, on 40 this afternoon, this evening. Uh, name is David, located about 10 miles northwest of Swindon. I'm guessing you're quite close <laughs> to me. Uh, Mike Zero, Golf Okay, David, yeah, the name this way is James, Juliet, Alpha Mike, Ex Sierra, and uh, you're quite correct, I'm uh, just down the road from you, from you. I'm actually in, uh, or on the outskirts of uh, Swindon. Uh. So I've had about two or three hours uh, experimenting with this antenna on air, and it's not the most scientific experiment, but uh, first impressions, well, the first thing I noticed when I... Uh, started scanning through the bands is it did seem to pick up a lot less local interference than uh, any of the other antennas that I've tried and uh, we do get a lot of local interference here so um, I guess we could call it a success on that front. In terms of uh, performance it's uh, definitely an Envis antenna it's not a uh, DX antenna by any means but uh, on 40 meters I was getting uh, all over Europe from here in the UK and uh, 80, I was making contacts as well. It's starting to become a little uh, inefficient on the 80. Um, but it still works. I was still making the contacts. Um, I tried 160 and I did get a couple of contacts. But um, to be honest, it's really not a 160 meter antenna. Its uh, performance was really quite poor. So... What we have to remember with this antenna though is it's going to be a little inefficient on transmit because we've taken the end of the antenna, we've connected it to a resistor and then we've grounded it via a ground rod. So um, you're going to be blowing some of your transmit power in heat in the resistor. So um, there's going to be some inefficiencies there but um, I have to say it wasn't as bad as I expected. Um, I think the next experiments try and it'll be another video for another day is if you remember on the diagram I showed you at the beginning of the video the two ground rods were connected together which as I said I've not done with my setup here um, connecting that wire between the two ground rods so connecting the two ground rods together is uh, apparently meant to give you a little bit of a boost in uh, efficiency according to uh, the write-up I've read on it. So I think that's the next thing to try, but that'll be another video for uh, another day. I think the ultimate test is, would I keep this antenna as it is, or would I uh, pull it back down and put my quarter wave back up? Well, it's a slight reduction in performance on 40 meters. But it still works, it still makes the contacts and I also get 80 meters as well. So I think I'm willing to accept that slight reduction in performance on 40 in order to get use of 80 meters as well. So I think all in all we can uh, call this experiment fairly successful. <laughs>